Most often you're gonna go this direction to a trinomial, so that's three terms. And we just go through a procedure. Um, if you have two terms, which we call a binomial, two terms, um, we call that difference of squares. And there's a simple little rule there. Um, and then when you get four terms, uh, we call that factor by grouping. So I'll go through some examples and we will get a good grip on this. All right, topic one is we're going to factor um, just with GCFs, okay? So the first example I gave right here, before I even started to think of any of those methods, I am looking for GCF. And I noticed that a three goes into nine, three and 12, so I got the three out. And then I look for the lowest power, so x squared, because there's x cubed, x four. So I know that's the GCF. All right, so once I pull that out, you're basically just dividing it all out. So what I just did in my head, I took this guy and I divided it by that GCF. And that got me that term right there. And then I took the middle term. And then I divided this to get that X. And then the last thing I did I did this one to get the four, okay? All right, so again, you could pause and then try this example and then come back. Okay, I just noticed a typing mistake I made. Um, sorry about that. There should be a square there, because these are like terms. I, I didn't want to have like terms. So let's put a square there. All right. Um, so a way you can always see if you're right, you can distribute back. So distribute back means take that, multiply that. So we get six X cubed, take that, multiply that minus 4x, take that and get that, you get positive 4, happening, positive 8, x squared, and that is that answer. So here I'm looking for these guys, it looks like there's just a 2, and then I look for the lowest power, to the three and then look for the lowest one here it's y squared now I divide back so 2x minus 10 y minus 7 y squared And if I distribute back, that times that, oops, there's my mistake, two times that. So get rid of that four. So could you check back? So that is just X and it needs a two there because two times two is four. And then three plus one is that and then the Y squared. 2 times 10 is 20, and then 3 is there, and then 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 times 7 is 14, they have the 3 matches, 2 and 2 is 4, so now it's right. All right, topic 2, we call this simple trinomials. All right, so there's sort of a pattern you can see, you'll get good at it when you practice a, a whole bunch. Um... So you can follow that pattern. 
Okay, so let's just go through an example here. Okay, so the first thing is I have um, this example. And as soon as I see it's a minus, a plus, I know it's a minus and a minus. And how I know that is because a negative times a negative gets me that positive, And a negative plus a negative gets me a deeper negative. So I know that works. Because the pattern is you want to have um, these two numbers, whatever they become, okay? These two numbers got to multiply to that. These two numbers got to add to that. All right. So you can write out a little T chart. That's what I like. I have positive six, so I have one times six. So the T chart is just finding all the products. Two times three. All right. Now I say to myself, hmm. Which one gets me a five? And I know it's these two. All right, so that's why I put the three and the two. It doesn't really matter. You can have it this way. It doesn't change the answer. And if you want to do a quick check back, you take these two and you multiply. Do they make positive six? Yes. Take those two and you add them. Do they get negative five? Yes. So I know I did it right. Okay, the example two here, let's just switch up the color. So now I quickly do my teacher. That's so why I have one in 36, two in 18, three in 12, four and nine, and six and six. Okay? Now, this sign is critical because this is a subtraction sign. This was a positive sign. That's why I added. Here, I'm going to subtract or take the difference. So it's 35, 16, 9, 5, 0. Now I'm looking for the middle number, and this time it's 5. So there is the 5. Now, you have to watch out because it's a positive 5. So it's 9 plus 4. Or it could be nine take away four because remember you're doing the difference four minus nine so we're taking the difference of those numbers so it makes a totally different answer this is positive five this is negative five so I know it's these guys so that's why I have a pause of nine and the negative four to get the answer okay so you guys can try that and have a go So I know this one, and you can write it like that, because they're both the same. And there's the answers. Okay, so I just quickly just, in my brain, I'm just saying, I take these numbers and I quickly add them to get positive eight. So some people just throw in random signs and then they think that's the answer. But if you add those, you get negative eight and there's no negative there. So that would be wrong. All right, now we're on to topic three, and this is what we call uh, 
sort of the more difficult factoring, and there's two methods. There's decomposition, and there's triple plate. Okay, so let's go through decomposition. So what we do is we have this example. The first thing we do is we look at the middle term. So 11 is a number. Now, when I do the T chart, it's slightly different from the one we did because there's a number in the front here. That's why it's a little more difficult because it's not x squares anymore. It's like 2x squares, 3x squares. So we got to take these two numbers and multiply right off the bat to get 18. Then we do the T chart. All right. Now it's the same procedure. We're looking for two numbers that add to pos of 11. And there they are. Okay, so we found that. Now we can go into our decomposition. So we're just going to rewrite um, with those two terms. Because all I did is took the 11x apart and made it a 9x plus a 2x. So it's just decomposing it. And then we break it into two parts. And then we can factor out. Okay, what's common? All right, and then we can see down at the very bottom here, and then we got the answer. Okay, so what I just did here is slow it down a bit. I saw a 3 and an X, and then this side. I had 2x plus 6, I saw 2. And what you do is you, you got to make these common. If these are not the same, you did something wrong. Those brackets got to be the same. You might have to reshuffle your, your order. So those, I say, become one part of the answer. And I say these leftover pieces form the other part. Okay, so that's how I got that answer. Um, okay, let's do the triple plate, another method. You can choose whatever you want. So with triple plate, um, you take those guys and whatever this number is, if it's a three, you go three X, three X, three. If you had a 2x squared there plus x minus a um, 3, you'd go 2x, 2x all over 2. So this determines your, your setup. Now you do your t chart. You take those two just like we did before and you do the exact same thing. And they go there and there. And now you divide out. So 3 doesn't go into that, so don't touch it. So that just comes down because 3 doesn't go into 2. But 3 goes into those two to form that, and that's your answer. Okay, you can pause now and practice these ones. I'm going to do triple play. That's just my method. Okay, here's a good example. Now, um, you got to watch out, and I put a little disclaimer here. See, 4 doesn't go into 6, doesn't go into 2. So this is where we call the divide and conquer stage now. So what I do is I write this 2 times 2. Because 2 times 2 is 4, so you can break it apart. It's called divide and conquer. So you get 2x minus 3, and then this can go into that one. So we get 2x minus 1, 